going to be having the next talk is going to be Arshan. He's the... Uh, What's my last name? It's uh, <clears throat> D. Arshan D. is going to be uh, doing the presentation for building and stopping next generation XXS, XSS worms. So here you go. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to walk. You got that nervous energy. Probably going to have the shaky voice too. All right, so my name is Arshan Abir Siagi. So like Mr. Miyagi plus Dabir, Dabir Siagi. Um, I'm the director of research at Aspect Security. Uh, you can f go to our booth if you want to find out more about us. But uh, my job, not only to do the normal assurance work, but also to uh, you know, do research into what's coming next. OK, so, I, so what I tried to do with this talk is figure out what were the hard limits, what were the upper bounds on what we could do with the cross-site scripting worm with and without malware. Um, so I didn't address malware as much as I wanted to because I realized that, I mean, with malware, all rules are off. It's just an engineering challenge uh, in whatever you want to do to make the malware do whatever. Um, so so uh, actually, before we get into it, I want to say something brief about click jacking. Um, so a lot of people wanted to hear about the click jacking technique, including myself. Um, <laughs> And uh, they pulled the talk because Adobe said, that's uh, really bad. We don't want that getting out. So after that talk, they leaked a few clues during their talk. And from those clues, I was able to figure out uh, what the general technique was. And uh, you know, with a little more research, I figured out what uh, one of the flash problems would be. And I would, I would rate the flash vulnerability 7 out of 10. OK? But the problem is that, uh, and that would be bad enough, right? That Adobe would not want that pulled, or wouldn't want that disclosed. But then, um, I, I, uh, you know, I found out that there is actually a 10 out of 10 impact vulnerability with Flash. Um, and I'm not gonna give any details about it, um, but uh, suffice to say that they have the goods, okay? So if everybody remembers the Dan Kaminsky mess, um, you know, how our flake was the one to uh, first publicly, uh, you know, discover it, even though it had been discovered by other people, but quietly. And then Thomas, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, Patasek, P-T-A-C-E-K, you know, he verified that, that Dan actually had the goods. So my impersonation is kind of them both. So uh, I sort of figured out, you know, one of the really bad things you can do, but uh, <laughs> they're sitting on something that's, that's, that's pretty much as bad as you can get. So I would, uh, I would definitely cut them some slack if you're upset about missing the talk, but uh, really, really bad. OK. Um, so, so actually, well, just briefly, while I, you know, I just have it up on my browser. So people were confused exactly about click jacking, what click jacking is. And I want to point out that uh, the code for doing click jacking uh, has been on Arsnake's site under his uh, weird labs uh, section for about a year and a half. Um, and Gareth Hayes, who's, the, uh, who's not as well known as he should be, he's a, he's a young hacker from the UK, he was doing something like this uh, last year to uh, iframe in uh, and, and beat um, OpenID login forms. So uh, this is something that you know, is actually you know, quite possible and it's been done. So if the general technique of clickjacking is, is pretty well known, although we're calling it different things. So I'm going to move my browser. And uh, that is huge. And it didn't work. OK, so, so this is my site. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't see it, I guess, because I have the opacity set too low for this bright screen. But basically, if you, uh, if you try to mouse over a link that's on the page, And I can't even see it. Okay, well, here, we got another clue here. Okay, so we're on IE Jesus, my site, okay? And let's pretend that I put a link here with an absolute position with style sheets. If you actually click where my link is, it's going to go to netflix.com. So this page, with this page, I can trick you into clicking an arbitrary link on an arbitrary site. So Netflix is... You know, something you're permanently logged into all the time. 
So if I, I frame into an evil page, um, you know, Netflix, and you come to my site, you're logged into Netflix, the iframe behind the page is what you're actually clicking into and you don't realize it. Um, I haven't weaponized this, um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the general technique. Okay, so this is, uh, this is actually worse than uh, you know, the guys are willing to give credit for. I, th I think it's pretty bad on its own. So there's, you know, if, if you think about how to fix this, you come up kind of blank because this is kind of an architectural thing built in the browsers. It's a feature, sure. Um, so Web 2.0, you know, DHTML, we got to be able to move stuff around, make it less visible. You know, we need fade outs. So this is something that's built into the browser. Um, so it, this, the reason this is bad is not because I can trick you into clicking on one link because most of the time you could do that with CSRF, right? So you would click on one link and then, uh, you know, we would, we would drag the iframe um, to follow the mouse and then we could have you click on a second link and a third link and whatever. If we can trick you on a clicking four or five links, we can make you do pretty much whatever we want. Um, and uh, then all your token-based CSRF defenses are useless. Your referrer-based defenses are useless because you're on the site. So, uh, you know, nothing looks uh, broken. So what the, uh, what the browsers could do, I think, actually, is come up with a reliable uh, frame breaker for iframes across browser. So if you could do that, then when you go to Netflix.com, Netflix.com can say, no, I want to be the top frame. And if I'm not the top frame, I'm not going to serve the request. So that seems to me to be the easiest way to do this, to, to apply this fix in the browser. But as it stands, kind of an architectural problem. Um, how many people have frame breakers on their page? Yeah, very small number. Netflix is a big site, and they don't have a frame breaker. And even if they did, you know, it's, it's a little bit trickier to make that work in iframes, especially cross-browser. Okay, so uh, I just want to, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of people gave Dan Kaminsky a lot of crap because they didn't know that he actually had the goods. So this is exactly the same thing. Those guys have the goods. All right, so we're going to get to the topic of my talk now that I wasted 10 minutes giving them press. Okay, so uh, cross-site scripting worms. What we've seen so far in the cross-site scripting worm domain has been actually pretty, pretty elementary. I hate to say that, you know, because uh, I'm friends with Sammy, and Sammy wrote some really clever code, um, and, he, and he definitely uh, jump-started our industry. You know, we should all be donating to the Sammy Fund if he wasn't already like a millionaire, um, but he's doing okay. So we also owe Sammy, the, uh, you know, Great round of applause, but, 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 uh, Sammy was very, very non-malicious. And somebody who's got malicious plans can use cross scripting worms to do really, really awful stuff. So we're going to briefly look at um, worms in, in a kind of academic context, analyze what they're doing in the present, and figure out what can be different in the future. So Jose Nazario is the, is the premier world expert on worms. So he did a lot of research for worms. Uh, at the network level, you know, with Code Red and all those other different worms that we, we had to deal with. Um, so I want to apply his research to cross-site scripting worms and see what it yields. Okay, so he...